they asked me for feedback. When people ask you for feedback, they're lying. They, they're, you know what they're doing? When somebody asks you for feedback, you know what they're doing? They're fishing for a compliment. Leif, let's debrief. What do you got? So the question from this leader was, hey, uh, what do I do? I mean, they're asking for feedback and then they don't want to listen to that feedback. And then they just push back and they make excuses about it. So, so they don't really want feedback at all. Mm-hmm. You know, and so how do I deal with that? That's, that was the question. And so the first, first thing I had to ask was, okay, well, how are you giving that feedback? And of course, as we started digging into it, you know, the feedback is like, oh, you, you, you want some feedback from me? Well, let me tell you how <laughs> screwed up you are. And, and, you know, so, and that's something that I think oftentimes where even if people mean something that's constructive, they just, they have a hard time seeing it from someone else's perspective. And you talk about this all the time. No one likes feedback. No one likes to hear. We even do this. We give presentations, you know, we, we, we run workshops and training and then we get, we say, okay, how could we do it better? And the moment people are like, you know what, you know, if you focus on this, I can feel myself start like bristling against that feedback. I think it's just human nature. Everybody falls into that. Mm-hmm. So what I had to help this leader understand was like, hey, um, think about it from your boss's perspective. Like what, and what are you actually providing feedback on? Like, how are you providing that feedback? And he was like, well, I'm doing it in a professional manner. So we went back and forth on that a little bit. And so what I, what I actually had to finally get across to him was like, okay, if, if you're doing, if you're giving constructive feedback that's valuable to the team and you're doing it effectively, you're not gonna get pushback from that. And it, it, that's the test for whether or not you're doing that right. So we finally had to get him to take some extreme ownership of, okay, I need to be more cognizant of my tone, of the things that I'm actually pushing back on. Are they really important? And then maybe I need a little, little indirect approach mm-hmm. instead of that direct approach of just being brutally honest. But they asked me for feedback. When people ask you for feedback, they're lying. They, they're, you know what they're doing? When somebody asks you for feedback, you know what they're doing? They're fishing for a compliment. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They don't want to improve. They've got their reel and rod out and they got a big worm and the worm says, hey, can you give me some feedback? They want you to say that I was blown away, especially your boss. Your boss just wants to hear how great they did. So just keep that in mind when that happens. Uh, then you know it's a good thing, and we do this a lot at Echelon Front. I don't know if you did it in this particular case, but all the time I'll say, okay, cool. Now you understand what I'm talking about? And they say, yeah, no, I'll do it next time. You say, cool, let's role play. I'm your boss. Give me some feedback. And they, you know, it might take them two or three tries before they start doing it in an indirect way that's not going to be offensive, and it's not easy to do. But it's impossible to do if you don't get the right mindset. If you don't, If your mindset is, Oh, Leif just asked me for feedback. Great. Now I can unload on him. It's like, mm, probably not the best attitude to go into this thing with. Uh, I, I wrote about this in Leadership Strategy and Tactics. Um, and it's just talking about, basically it was, it was talking, there's a whole thing about how to, how to give the truth tactfully. There's a whole section on that. This is like um, just talking about weak bosses weak bosses or indecisive bosses, how do you handle them? And, and, and I wrote, be cautious. Of course, right, be cautious. As with micromanaging bosses or indecisive boss with a weak boss, you have to be careful when you step up to lead. Even the feeblest and weakest of bosses have egos, and if you offend them, they may lash out. You could translate that right to, even when somebody asks for feedback, they can get offended and lash out. So don't be offensive or overly assertive when you start to do this. Use soft language and frame things in a way that it does not diminish the boss's ego, but actually boosts it. Quote, here's some examples. Hey boss, I know you have a lot going on, so I was thinking it might be helpful if I jumped in on this project over here to move forward with it. Would that be all right? Hey boss, I'm sorry for being slow on the uptake, but I just want to make sure I fully understand your vision. Do I, do I have it right when I say, well, you know, whatever? Hey boss, I'm trying to step up my game. Would you mind if I took a crack at planning this next project so I can get some experience? Like all those are ways of me saying, hey, I'll, I'll run this for you. You know, instead of saying, hey boss, you know what? I think I could do this better than you. Why don't you let me handle it? What's that going to do? It's going to offend somebody. Well, I cut you off. What were you going to say? No, I, I was just going to... Uh Echo what you were talking about with role play. And you and Dave have talked about that, you know, on the, on the debrief uh, podcast here uh, extensively about how effective that is. And Dave does an awesome job of that, of role playing this, because it's, I think a lot of times it takes that role play to realize like how you're actually being interpreted, you know, when you're like, okay, let's, let's role play that. And when someone realizes that 
how they're like, okay, how's the boss gonna perceive that? And you, they, they get to detach from it, they get to analyze it, and then they realize, okay, that's a problem. But what you just, those examples you just laid out there are really powerful because you, you want it to be the boss's idea. If it's the boss's idea, that's the best case scenario for you. Hey, you know, not like, oh, Leif came in with a feedback and told us we sucked and we needed to fix this and we need to, I actually want, I, if, if, if you're my boss and you're asked for feedback and I wanna, I wanna, I wanna lay, lay it up there for it to be your idea, you're running with it. And I said, that's a great, that's a great idea, boss. I'll go make it happen. Good call. Yeah. I don't care because I want the team to win and I want us to be able to move forward together. And when it comes, so, so if it comes to criticism, if I wanna give you criticism, if you get done with your brief, you get done explaining your plan to me, or you get done explaining your plan to the team and then you pull me aside afterward and you say, hey Jocko, you got any feedback? You know, how, how was that brief? And I go, well actually you, you went over everything too quick and no one could follow it, right? What are you gonna do? You're gonna get defensive. At best you're gonna get defensive. At worst you're gonna say, you know, that's your, cause you're stupid. So instead I say, I take that away from him. I say, you know what Leif, as far as I could tell it was solid, I'll tell you what though, I, I know I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed and for me, I, I need to review it because it was just, it was a little bit too much information for me too fast. I apologize for like not following everything. I, I'll, I'll, tr I'll try and take better notes next time so I can ask some more specific questions but it was hard for me to follow on, I'm sorry, right? So now I'm taking ownership for being stupid but I'm actually hinting to you that maybe it's a good idea to slow down a little bit. Again, would it be in an ideal world great for me just to be direct and say, oh, you want some feedback? Cool, you, you go too fast and no one understands what you're talking about. That would be great if it didn't offend you and now you got mad. So here's another thing. I talk a lot about understanding other people's perspectives, right? I wanna know what someone's perspective is so I can see it from their, from their view. There's one more thing to add to that, and, and lately I've been talking a lot about the power of a story, and then Daryl and I did a podcast about how people formulate stories to exist in the world. They actually put together in their minds a story that is them. So if I'm dealing with you, Leif, I don't just wanna know what your perspective is. I don't wanna just understand your perspective. I wanna know what your story is. And I wanna think about this, not just from the perspective of this moment, but from the perspective of your whole story. You ever hear somebody and you meet somebody and you, know, you and I are, we meet somebody and it's somebody that I knew. And you know, the guy walks away, you know, say hi, how you doing, oh, good to meet you. And then he walks away and you'll, you might say to me, what's that guy's story, right? That's a real question. It's a real question. What's that guy's story? So when you're dealing with your boss, don't just think, oh, I wanna understand their perspective in this moment. Think to yourself, I wanna understand their perspective and their story. How'd they get here? Are they insecure about their leadership position? Are they overconfident about it? What is it? What's the story? And then apply that to their perspective and then apply those things to how you interact with them. I think if you understand that at a deep level, you can predict their behavior. For sure. And, you know, I, if with pretty pretty amazing accuracy. One one final thing I th I'll, I'll say about, about this kind of situation is the, it's really important to prioritize and execute. And this is something I struggle with sometimes when people ask for feedback and you're trying to like, well, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And um, I, it, was, uh, it was something JP and I were just talking about with a leader we were working with. You know, and it was like, hey, okay, let's really focus on, okay, what really matters here? And, and is it that big of a deal? And I think a lot of times for folks that get spun up about something, if the boss is asking for feedback, like if you're giving feedback to the boss about something that was screwed up, it's something that I learned from you in Tasking a Bruiser, it, you, you didn't push back on anything until it really mattered, which then gave us the leadership capital to be able to do that. And I think so many people don't think strategically when they do that, so they're, they're pushing back on little minuscule things that don't matter at all. So then when they need to push back on something that really matters, it's like, oh, it's just babbing again, complaining about something, and they're not even really accepting that feedback um, that, uh, so, so they, don't, they don't take that on board. I think it's sound advice to close this one out to say, don't nitpick your damn boss. <laughs> if I am sending you 
on an operation or on a mission and my implied intent is not valid for this situation, I better be damn sure to 